Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Swarovski Optic, birding live on location from the tropics this time. I'm Diego Calderon from Colombia, and today we're going to have a very, very exciting show. We're going to be broadcasting to you from Colombia, Costa Rica, Argentina, South Africa, India, and Sri Lanka. We are live, and of course, you know, nature allows we're going to be all transmitting to you. But sometimes we are in remote areas and sometimes we might have someone dropping a phone. We might have some issues with the signal. So please forgive us for that. But, you know, that's the that's the fun of being live. Please don't forget to ask questions, to come with questions on the uh, Swarovski Optic Facebook page. While the video is going live, you can interact there with us and all of us. We will do the best to try to answer them. And as you might notice, I have something different here today, a different beautiful, nice color. Some of us have the brand, brand new NL Fuel 32 millimeters. Uh, tiny and lightweight, cool, new binocular. Look at the size, look at, you know, how it weighs nothing. It's unbelievably crisp, like the, you know, previous NL Fuel, the 42 bigger millimeters. And this has, you know, as the old models, uh, unbeatable ergonomics. They are, they, are, they are a truly cool new design. Uh, they have the widest field of view, and I, I would say these, these, these are you know, probably most likely the perfect birding binoculars. Uh, not that I've ever got, but that ever existed, to be honest. So welcome to the show. Enjoy it. And as I said, we are gonna be, we are gonna be, come on, we are gonna be watching multicolored Tanager just gone. That's Carlos Mario from La Minga. Hello, Mario. Good morning, mate. How are you? Good morning, Diego. This is hey, Jose and Mario from La Minga. How are you guys? Very we good. Are Look at you, Saffron Crown Tanager, Tanager right now on the screen. Yes, and the multicolor Tanager is coming there. So maybe if we wait a few seconds, it's going to come back. It will show up. It will show up. You bring us, you bring us your luck, mate. You bring us your luck. That's a beautiful Tana here. Tell us, tell us where you are actually in Colombia. What's what's your location? Where is La Minga? We are in an echo lodge called La Minga at 2,000 meters above sea level. 20 minutes away from Cali, the third biggest city in Colombia. Uh, it's a beautiful cloud forest full of tanagers. Nice, nice, mate. I see some Near orchids Chikorado. there too, some tanagers flying. Yeah, we, we are all, there you are, yeah. there you are, you're back. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to be walking in this garden later. Look at that, cock of the rock. <laughs> hey, good morning, everyone. How <laughs> are you? Hey, Diego. <laughs> Hello. Going, hey? Look at that. Uh, look, well, this is a, a, a fantastic model. It's a male of the Anden cock of the rock. I'm here in Jardin in the Western Andes branch uh, of Colombia. This is a beautiful morning. We had rains the last few weeks, uh, but today is, is amazing. Your, so your they are your coming. Your just just move. Just leg. move. Find us another one. Yes. Please, we are drooling. Um, oh. Here is another one hiding behind the lids. So let me focus. And a few females came already. So they are still active. So we, uh, we will see them along the transmission. Okay. Look at this, Jose. This matches. This color of the new NL Pure 32 matches. <laughs> yes, so yes, yes. Legs, mate, perfectly. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. I was just telling everyone that I am in the Enchanted Garden, El Jardín Encantado, a beautiful garden of hummingbirds near Bogota. So I'm going to be showing you some birds later when these guys start, you know, uh, getting us all entertained here. This is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> So they are more quiet in the in the morning, as you know. They are more active in the afternoon. But but with the light of today, it will help for, to have more views of them. Hey, Lucas. Good morning. Hey, Jose. How are you doing? Everything fine, fine here. Thanks, mate. Wow, you have good light. Yeah, I have Great. a good light. I'm in Buenos Aires, Costanera Sur Reserve, just a small reserve, five minutes away from the heart of Buenos Aires, with more than. 350 species that can be wow. seen here. Oh, wow. You might be hearing cars passing by. That's because I'm on the street. And what we can see there is a Coscoro swan. Yeah, a pair oh, of nice. them. Yeah, uh -huh. well, the smallest swan in the world. For people on the of the northern hemisphere, they might look like uh, like a goose, you know. But no, it's a swan. Really, really nice. I'm around them. 
I will be showing you later other ducks and coots and other stuff. Lucas, I am very curious about the name, which is the origin of the name of this one. The Koskorova comes from the scientific name that is Koskorova Koskorova. So that's why the name is Koskorova oh, swan. It's a okay, swan that okay. is par partially migratory. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, some uh -huh. of its populations are resident and some of them are migratory, especially the ones of the south in Patagonia. They can fly all the way up to here to Buenos Aires and probably a little bit uh, south of Brazil. They are monotypic, that is, they have only one uh, subspecies. And they can lay from five to ten eggs usually. And it depends on the place where they are breeding, they range between May and they breed between May and December. All pure white, but also interesting when they fly, the tip of the wings are really, really black. Hey, Lester and Ramani, how are you doing? They're in Sri Lanka. Hi. Yeah, we are doing good, but uh, we are having a bit of wind and the leaves and branches are covering uh, all that we've tried to focus on. And he's also not coordinating, uh, uh, um, helping us. He's facing his back towards us. So <laughs> we can see very much. We can see a little bit of it. We can see the shape of it, but we that's nature, you know. Sometimes, south. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they face you. Sometimes they don't. So we know how it is. This is a fledgling that is here today. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. You have on a stick out and, and gone, so he's here on its own. Oh, okay. So it's a fledgling. So you know the place where they nest. Yes, it's a stick out. Yes. Yes. Oh, good, good, good to know that. It's always good to have a steak out to show. Just behind here in a coconut tree, there is a, yeah. Nice, nice. How big it is in centimeters? Do you have an idea? Or in inches? It's been here for, it's been here for. It's about 21 centimeters. Oh, okay, nice. Interesting, interesting now. I love owls. They are beauty. Beautiful, and it's always good to see them in daylight, you know? It's easier to see them. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yes. Yes, yes. And it's already getting dark. Uh, well past 5.30. And, uh, rain clouds also in the sky, so not very good light to show it. Okay. But good. We Interesting. The birds from uh, South America. Incredible colors. Oh. And, yep. Thanks, thanks. It's, it's here it's 9 9 a.m. or 9 9 10 past 9 actually but uh interested to see how oh, this oh look it's looking now okay. it's looking now let's take a look yeah take a look at the face yeah now the owl is looking at us you can see its face yeah Lester is calling it so that's why it has turned around That's a, the typical sound it makes. The call is a what sound? Hi, Lester. Ramani, Surya here from just across yeah. the small Hi, bit of Surya. sea that we have between us. And yes, yes. You got a little more yeah, I can see that scop owl. I think it's going to be ready to fly out soon. No, these are Pacific Golden Plovers, the last of the yeah, yeah. Uh, the migrants, I think. The last batch. In fact, you can see right. some of them are getting the black blotches, right. okay. uh, converting themselves to breeding plumages. All right, In fact, I'm just going to take you all through the marsh. Uh, right. You can see the Pacific Golden Plovers there. Uh, those are the closest birds, but a lot of the action yes. is has a little bit of traffic in the back. I'm just going to find those flamingos. Okay. Uh, we have about four of them, which is quite strange. There they are. You can see the painted stalks in the flamingos, the greater flamingo in the back. All right. Yeah. And you can see my hometown, my city in the back with the bikes and the cars. So yeah, this is the kind of places we've been burning in when we grew up. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, what do we have there? Hello there, everybody. Hi, Roger. I'm not even going to try to identify that bird. Nice, yeah. It's a really pretty yellow-backed mm -hmm. Oreo. 
I am here in, oh. the, in the Central Andes of Colombia. Central Andes of Colombia. How fantastic That's... does that sound? That's oh, right, there he goes. Yeah. Oh, it's gone now. Yeah. That's Ukuku Rural Lodge. It's, they have here like some nice beers. Let me show you here. There's a bunch of activity wow. right now. Um, uh -huh. Now we have some, some palm tanager bills. But there were some South wow. Crown tanagers. They what is it that they're feeding on? Sorry? What is it that they're feeding on? Uh, I can oh, see some bananas. kind of fruit. Yes, bananas. bananas. Oh, wow. Nice, yeah, nice, bananas. nice. Yeah, yeah. What do you have there? What is the, the big the big bird down there? Uh, well, in I the, have the a painted layer, stalk in the there? stock. A painted stalk, which is uh -huh. probably as colorful as things get in the marsh over here because we pretty much get non-breeding birds. And in the back, we have some spoonbills and some flamingos. That is basically what we are looking at in my frame. Nice. And you can see my city, probably, which is probably the most interesting part, how close the birds are to the traffic. Wow. Multicolor. We, we so are cool. looking at a red headed barbet, a male. Wow. Come back, Barbet. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you guys can hear in the background the 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 jelly pack oil singing. It's quite nice sound. I I could get a little bit of it, but yes, no, I can. I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's quite pretty. Quite pretty sound. Lucas. Yes, I'm here, guys. Well, I was just spotting a um, white face whistling duck, but it went to sleep right away. No. <laughs> yeah, you, you can, you can, see, yeah, it happens, mate. You can see part of his face actually stuck in its, its bill under the wing, as usually most of the ducks do. But if you pay attention, you can, uh, next to it, we have a coot. Let me see if I can see uh, a red garter coot. Yes, a red garter coot to the left of it. And that's a white face whistling duck. And what we got there in El Canto, Luis? Luis, can you listen to me? He seems to be mute, but whatever. Let's go back to the uh, white face whistling duck sleeping there. Yeah, you can find them big part of South America, and also you can find them in Africa. Yes, it's one of those species with a disjunct distribution. Who doesn't love white-faced whistling dogs, mate? Oh, buenos dias. Buenos dias, Diego, mi amigo. What How's a great pair of binoculars you had, eh? I can't complain. I can't complain. They're marvelous. <laughs> and and some, some more people in the show have them, so we'll see them, we'll see them again for sure. Okay, so have, what... I have I have saffron pinches here. I have saffron oh, pinches beautiful. on the fence. Uh, there's a couple of males there, you know, with a very very orangey head. And I had a juvenile a second ago that I want to try to show you because that juvenile is, of course, completely different. Look, oh, this yeah. is actually a female. Let oh, me damn. get it in focus there. Nice, beautiful birds. I love I love yellow birds. My friend, I love them. I just oh, you, love you, 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 you have gubernatrix, so you have a cool yellow bird. Oh, there. yes, cardinal. we have the yellow cardinal, <laughs> gubernatrix cristata. Beautiful bird, beautiful bird, beautiful. Bird. Yes, it's true. So what else so tell what me, do you have there besides besides the uh, white face whistling dogs? Well, Costanera, next, Costanera is an next, amazing place. Yeah, Costanera is an amazing place. Next to the white face whistling dog, we have a um, um, red gatcher, a coot. Cool. You can see we have three coots here. One is white wing, the other one is red fronted, and this is the red gutteret. You can tell them because they have a line between the beak and the shield. Yeah, it's yeah. just next to the whistling duck. It's very common here, as the two other. I will try to spot it on it better. Hey, yeah, Junior. Johnny. Hello. Hello, people. Yeah, it's very happy to share this screen. Oh, wow. Um, I'm live from Tinabu Birding Reserve, a very charming place here in the west slope of the central Andes of Colombia. A pretty very reserve. It's like a, a small island of forest um, among many, many uh, coffee crops. So there is a kind of a sanctuary for many birds. Uh, wow. 
yeah, now we have this is the red crown, the woodpeckers coming to feed on the on the banana feeders. Uh, and been there was also a euphonia right there. There was Sorry? a euphonia before. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good, good. I love woodpeckers. Favorite family. My favorite oh, family. Oh, look at that. Oh, Jose. Oh, look that. Hey, Lucas, again. Oh, <laughs> this is a male. Um, he's very quiet. The female's already gone, and there are a few, like two or three males around. The most of the of the individuals, uh, adults, already gone to feed. I think it's because the the good weather in the morning. So they started soon today to to feed around. But this one is cooperating for us. Hey, Jonier. Hey, how are you? Oh. Wow. Okay, hey, no. okay. You have this green honey, honey creeper. creeper. Excelente. Yeah, the green honey creeper. One of the most uh, uh, the visitors of these uh, feeders like to, like to have it there. Yes, and now this reserve I was telling you is a, a special place because it protects like a, that small uh, patch of forest among all these uh, coffee crops. We have, uh, Roger! Oh, look! Yeah, Roger, Star from Crown Tanager. Hello, guys! <laughs> hey. hey! Wow, so back this is a face. Star from Crown Tanager, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as, as we wait for the Tolima dove, excellent. Yeah, yeah, it's, we are waiting oh, for, for some, some Tolima doves in the feeders. They are, they are, they were just there. They walked fast, but wasn't in, like I wasn't enough fast to put in the scope. Oh. Yeah, so wow, you, you had up. guys the same species. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thick Bilifonia. Wow, crazy. <laughs> yeah, Thick Bilifonia. Both, both places. <laughs> nice. What, you have guys about have... that? The peacock of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, it's a good combination. It's a good combination with the colors. Oh, guys, look, look at these guys. Look at that. Oh, very good. Look at that blue neck tanager that just arrived to the feeder. Yeah, it's a beautiful male. Oh, uh -huh. this is becoming more and more exciting. Uh, we move a little bit to the right. Yeah, it's there again. Yeah. Okay. This it's is gone. a it's blue, blue neck tanager. Blue neck. Yeah, blue neck tanager. We, yeah. we call it yeah. in Spanish yeah. Tangara Real, which is like the royal tanager because the beauty is, is very yeah. common in the in the yeah. coffee range in Colombia. Yeah, it's the Tangara Real. <laughs> now we have the big Bilifonia again. It seems that the all other birds have gone, already gone. Oh, we have what what do we have as a, with Luisa del El Encanto? The crimson back tanager, maybe? Yes, looks like a, a female of the crimson back tanager. The ah, male yeah, it is. It looks like a silver big tanager, the male of this species. So this is dollar. Okay, uh -huh. let's see what Roger is going to show us. Yeah, I'm trying to focus here on uh, uh, golden tanagers. Uh, let me... Oof. Yeah, sorry, they're gone. <laughs> Quite hard. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think I have here the blank wing saltator. Excellent. <laughs> and black bill thrush as well? Yes, black bill thrush is there in the, in the, in the bananas. Oh. It's still and hard saw... to beat the... Your cock of the rock. <laughs> and and I saw also a palm tanager, isn't it? Above above the thrush. That's totally right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are a bunch of, of palm very active. Too. You see there now. I had I had a quick view of the red bellied grackle here. So I hope they will come back for the feeders. We have also plantain and banana feeders here, but they are very shy, of course. Nice.
yeah, I hope I hope you you can you can put in the scope. Hey everybody! Cool, hey, hey John, Tony, how are you guys? How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. So um, yeah, joining you all the way from Pretoria, South Africa, and uh, we've got a nice. stunning, stunning grey-headed gull in the picture here. You can see the non-breeding bird to the left. There's a couple of youngsters, but there's a stunning, stunningly plumaged adult uh, in the frame. Here. You can see that stunning gray head, nice red colored eyes and bills and leg. There's a couple of them here. We had this place called Royval Sewage Works or water treatment areas. And naturally where there is um, human defecation, there's great numbers of birds. And so we find ourselves having a blast here today. There's another one that's just flown in there. Cool. Yeah, it looks like a nice, is that a, a, a stream or, or a, a lagoon? No, oh, so it's, it, it's, a, it's a canal. Um, so basically, yeah, all of the water treatment that's busy moving through here from, um, yeah, the various uh, pollution facilities, I guess, in and around the area. Um, oh, yeah, and that's why there's such a large <laughs> congregation of birds. Um, in South Africa, we always laugh because a lot of us birders spend a lot more time in and around sewage works than we do anywhere else. Um, we actually know somebody who's took his, his wife, their very first date, they went to a water treatment sewage works place. <laughs> who, doesn't, who, doesn't, who doesn't love birding in garbage, you know, plays and sewage plants, mate? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But let me let me show you a not so garbage bird. Look at this black throated mango, this male on the feeder here. Beautiful, beautiful hummingbird. Oh, it's That's just gorgeous, gone back. But we have we have some other stuff coming here. This is this is one of the usual suspects all over all over the Neotropics. Banana quit. Absolutely uh, stunning. That's something I wish we had here in, in South Africa. I'll give it to you that is uh, we don't have these we, we have a lot of stuff coming down to the feeders but we don't have these stunningly stunningly brightly colored stuff like you guys do in the near tropics you, you, you have the sunbirds mate so you can't complain <laughs> to be yeah, honest a couple, a couple. you <laughs> can see we've got now white-faced whistling ducks here in um shot with a also an uh, immature um you can see there's immature white-faced whistlers on the left as well yeah and then an yeah, immature gray-headed girl just behind it Actually, actually, try to try to get some detail on this hummingbird. It's one of the few birds that is recently sick with probably avian pox. So it has a little growing on the tip of the bill. This hummingbird, it's a it's a black-throated mango also, and it's it's quite it's quite not in the in the best shape. You see you see the details there with that yeah, little bird, yeah. poor, poor yeah. guy. But I have this other fear with tons of good birds. So look at that. That's the black-throated mango. That's the banana quits. This is a good place for an endemic, a Colombian endemic that is called Indico Cap Hummingbird. But it's actually in El Encanto also where, where Luis is. Uh, so we are, we are trying to get it on camera for you. Look at this good view of the mango. They have this amazing glowing black, greenish, uh, bluey uh, in the front. Are amazing, amazing birds. And oh, look at that, Rufus Tell Hummingbird in front of it. You choose, you choose where to focus your, your beans. And you know, I have to say, one of the cool things of having this Swarovski gear, um, I'm shooting with the scope, we, with the ATX uh, 65, is that you can do very, very close range. Look at you, Juan Diego, mate. What do you have there? Is that a brown hooded parrot or what, amigo? That it's a brown hooded parrot. Hello, hello, world, and hello, my Tocayo. good mate. Buenos dias, Diego. mate. Nice to hear you. Can you hear me well? Absolutely well, absolutely well. You 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 are gonna start to brag with the cool Costa Rican birds in three, two, <laughs> one, zero. We've been yeah, well, we've been enjoying your broadcast with the uh, excellent birds over there. But yeah, we have our little um, um <laughs> little <laughs> little little brown hooded parrot with this beautiful red eye ear patch you can see in there, uh -huh. and that huge white eye ring brown great. hooded parrot great I have we are right now um in case i haven't mentioned we are right now in the caribbean lowlands of costa rica in a uh, close to a place called laguna lagarto lodge this is a very remote uh, location uh, in the lowlands and we have some great feeders here and brown hooded parrots are coming around and they occasionally want to come down to the bananas and get a little snack and this one is cool. hanging around waiting for breakfast cool cool so yeah okay. Look at this, this hummer I have here is giving me, oh, okay, it's a mango. I just have, I just have for a second the endemic indigo cap hummingbird, so I'll, I'll keep chasing. 
I could charge him. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, well, great. We had a uh, Scarlet Rump Tanager there for a minute, I think. It's it's great to hear you, by the way, my friend Diego. Last time Absolutely. I you, we were chasing ground cuckoos in Costa Rica. I, I tell you, Costa Ricans offering the best, you know, birding craziness around the world. I twitched this ground cuckoo with you like a month ago, and it was fantastic. Oh, here is here is the, the, the owl again from Lesser. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Great. Look at that, what look at what that. is that again? Indian scops owl. Great. They've been they've been they've been showing it Indian since this morning. Owl. Yeah, that's great. That's great, guys. You you have so much luck with that bird down there. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, my brown hooded parrot seems uh, not scared at all by the Indian scops owl. It's, it's probably lazy, as, as most Costa Ricans, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I cannot say the Colombians are like super hard workers. <laughs> oh, I tell you, six in the morning today to do this crazy show. Oh, look at the whole Oh, there comes Jose bragging again. Oh, hey, wow. hey, mates. <laughs> Sorry, uh -huh. I, I have the same, the same mate, but he's cooperating today. Um, Wow. There is a flock yeah. of tanagers passing through the canopy, but they are not coming down. So oh, I, have I have to, to keep this, this male down here. Oh, wow. Don't worry, Jose. You are forgiven. Look at the Montezuma or Pendola, Juan Diego. Yeah. I got Uy, it Juan Diego, great. <laughs> well, no, it's hard to say great when you have a, a symbol. The rock right next to it. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know how you know how I'm feeling right now, showing this this saffron finches and and Roddy Grand Dogs <laughs> eating no, rice. No, 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 Diego. No, 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 that? Diego. Oh, that was a clay color robin, Juan Diego. Clay color thrush. Yeah, if clay you want to get thrush. a picky with the bird names. <laughs> oh, you are you are there, to... your Costa Rican national bird mate. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to compete to the ugliest uh, bird next to a co Andean cock of the rock. Die Juan Diego, how far are you from from the closest city? Hey guys, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Look at look at my 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 hummingbird came indigo indigo. Go ahead, uh, cap hummingbird. Excellent, an endemic. The endemic. Look at the little tint Super. of blue on the head. The light is 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 not the best in that direction, but that's kind of the jewel of this place. Ooh, Diego, indigo cap hummingbird. Tell me, Jose. Ooh, wow. Are you are you in the urban area of? of uh, the town yeah, where... Yeah, I have yeah. to tell you, everyone, this is a little crazy because it's a, it's a <laughs> garden. Let me show you right now with a lot, a lot of hummingbird feeders just here, very handy. Actually, let me show you this one. You know, uh, all the banana quits are here, all the, all the white-bellied wood stars. And this is a private garden from an enchanted person. And actually, the place is called Enchanted Garden, Jardín Encantado. I'm on a, on a town, not actually far from from main main square so it's pretty crazy to have all these birds here so we have a similar situation diego because i am not in the urban area but very close from Jose, Jardin, Jose, where... please please tell yeah. everyone how far you are from the main <laughs> square of Jardin. yeah so so from from the corner is 500 meters by walking you don't have to get a a, a taxi or a or a car you you just walk through the road the street and then and then a, a paved road until this uh, private place, which is a, a small uh, nature reserve owned by a biologist, a botanist, and it's easy Guys. to get here. It's very safe. Guys, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Roger, dove. Roger, show us the dove. It should be we in the pasture. I don't see it. Oh boy, we, this is embarrassing because just, <laughs> no, just. It's no always way. embarrassing. It's always <laughs> embarrassing with you. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 <laughs> So, no, 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 so no, no, wait, Roger, wait. Roger guys, right guys, now guys. is also at the feeders feeder. and he's chasing the Tolima dove in the pasture there because Adu <laughs> Cuckoo, that's what happens. The Tolima dove is just walking in the garden. One of the endemics oh that is very, very restricted to Colombia. So yeah, yeah. he's doing his best. He's doing his best. That's Where right. It? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, it just went in. Guys, is there? Guys, you can, can you see it? Um, no. There. There, no, you are, there yes, you are. Yes, there yes. Are. Excellent. Tolima, excellent. Wow, wow. Muy bien. Roger. Great. We have just a little bit of focus. Nice. Excellent. Oh, them, guys. Oh, super. Thank you. Wow. Where, 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 yeah, where is Tolima? I was, I was Roger, tell, to... tell the people what Tolima is, where you are, and, and Tolima, though, what it means. Nice. Nice question, Diego. Yeah, Tolima is, in, is a, it's a department in the central Andes of Colombia. And this little guy 
is an endemic from from this area and a little bit of the of the next department which is called Willa. So this one is quite skulky, skulky kind kind of dove. And uh, here in the Cucurula Lodge, they have some nice feeder where it's kind of the best place to see them here in this area in Tolima. Uh, and also it's my, my hometown. <laughs> there you are, you're at home. You're at home. I remember having to struggle to see this bird, you know, 10 years ago. Now you go to feeders, I tell you, that's luxury. That's great. That's right. Yeah, it used to be super hard to see and now it's coming to the feeders. So kind of kind of shows it's how still the, skulky, Colombian, but... the Colombian birding industry is, is moving forward over the years. You know, it's been changing and evolving. You now have places for all these rare skulky cool endemics. That's right. Yeah, here, here. This is one of the endemics here. Also, you can see here the Tolima Blossom Crown, the yellow, yellow headed brush finch. And um, yeah. I, I need to go cap hummingbird, the one you can you already yeah were trying to yeah. focus. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually here with just uh Rufus tail hummingbird that is a common common bird. But it's a beautiful animal. Look at that reddish tail, reddish bill. Probably one of the commonest hummingbirds all over this part of the northern uh, South America, but I mean such a pleasure to see. Yeah, well Oh, sorry, yeah, you got a big, big, big bird. What do you have there? Yeah, I mean, I'm not in the forest like you guys, but I have see, one endemic here. Yeah, show us. That's a that's an Indian yellow tuk tuk, with some <laughs> very common flamingos. Lifer, lifer. So, tuk -tuk is lifer. <laughs> yeah, it is a lifer for all of you. Uh, <laughs> because that is the only endemic we have over here and the brightest colored bird because most of our birds are in their non ruling plumages right now. I see. Uh, but yes, that is a sight. An orange bus, a yellow tuk-tuk and some flamingos in front along with some painted stalks. That, that's so amazing. Diego, your that's... garden sounds like quite a place. It's, yeah, it's, it's very entertaining. It's very entertaining. You know, probably a crazy contrast right now because I'm watching... Rufus tail hummingbird that is a tiny little bird and you have one of these painted uh -huh. storks that is a huge beast. How, how, how tall yes. they are, how big they are actually. Well, the painted storks can be up to three feet uh, tall if they stand slouched. Uh, awesome. And uh, yeah, you, you generally see them in most of the marshes and in the heron trees. In fact, awesome. a lot of the bird sanctuaries in India are protected because of their presence. In fact, let me do one thing. Let me try to pull the phone off the scope. Just to give you an idea of the contrast between our place and yours. There you are. There you are. You have a nice <laughs> wetland there. I'm actually yeah, I have a this, bright building too. Yeah. At this little house here, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a private house, as you all can see. And the garden is yeah. just back there, you know. It's, 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 the, mm -hmm. it's being kind of the private, you know, entertaining and love for, for hummingbirds of this family over the years. Look at this, this mango. It just allows me to approach it very, very close. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep on the on the scope right now, because I still have some of these guys of the feeders, saffron finches coming by the hordes, uh, and you know the traditional. Uh, oh, wow. Meche, Meche, buenos dias. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you, Diego? How are you, dear? Tell us who Oriol. Oh, your Oriol just jumped. <laughs> He's still here. Let's see. Show us. Show us. Show us. There it is. Look at that. What is that? <laughs> is that a migrant? Or yes, what? that's a migrant. We will miss him very soon. He's just about to leave. Those, those Baltimore Orioles are the most beautiful thing, isn't it? Yes, I love them. They sing very beautiful too. And by this time, they start to sing more and more before leaving. Meche, how is it going today? <laughs> Buenos dias. Everything cool in Rancho Naturalista? Everything good, yes. It's a beautiful morning here. It's not that sunny, but it's not that cloudy uh, either. Cool. <laughs> so it's quite, quite fresh. I love your saffron finch. That's a beautiful bird. They're I'd nice. Love to see They're it nice. someday. Look at this female crimson back tanager that we actually got earlier from El Encanto Reserve in Colombia by Luis. But he wa he had a little trouble showing us. And there is a male. There is a male. Oh, come on, show, show, show. Oh, it's going up. I have a killbill toucan over here too. Let's see a couple of killbill toucans in the distance. Let's see. Well, I got the palm tanager here. Show us the two cans, where are them? There they are. Oh, cool, cool. See them. Loving birds. They are quite distant. So there do you normally are. call them kill bill or rainbow bill? What's, we what's call the name them rainbow you use? bill. <laughs> why why rainbow is that? Bill. We call it in Costa Rica. Beautiful <laughs> colors on the bill. 
and it's funny they uh, they sing like a frog so most of the time people are oh what's that frog what the frog yeah just, yeah yeah actually two cans. Uh, uh golden tanager roger reporting golden bird on golden, golden tanager and yep. gone. yeah <laughs> oh wow man, beautiful man, tanager man beautiful beautiful you know, it's funny because Roger is like you're you're with Golden Tanager. Recently, I was watching Emerald Tanager on a trip, and it's it's exactly the same bird, just green, just just lemony green. <laughs> it's crazy, you know, repetition, and and we have plenty of species like that. That's right, yeah. That that's that's the nice the nice thing about Colombia, you know, that like there's a bunch of you know complex. Oh boy, it's gone. Complex uh, geography that helps us to do that. Um, hello, John here. Hi, Roger. Wow, we only had uh, just had a uh, rusty margin fly catcher that is coming near the feeder, fighting or chasing away all the other birds, but yeah, it's just gone. <laughs> yeah, what do you have there? Ah, it's a thick videophonia. Thick videophonia, you're right. Yeah, yeah, we were just looking at the emerald and the golden tanager, and um, also some saffron crown tanagers just flew away. I was trying to chase them, but you know how it works. <laughs> Yes, and we have like a like a two two hundred blue gray tanagers <laughs> that are all always coming to the feeder. Yeah, those guys in charge of eating all the banana, all the fruit. Yeah, like nice. these are like the first first species coming to the new established feeders. The blue gray tanagers. Yeah, and you have there now you, you have now there the now, crop tanagers. Exactly, it's crop tanagers, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, this banana, I, I don't know, for some reason they really like that one. You know, they have another feeder here and it's quite not not so visited as this one. So, <laughs> yeah, so now we have here the scrub tanager. Right. Ooh, look at this guy. Yeah, in, a, in, a, in a wire Back there. Again. Back again. And we've got a couple of, uh, a whole oh. lot of actually breeding white winged uh, terns. Sorry for the plane busy flying over. And uh, what's stunning is that these guys are here. There's, uh, there's hundreds of them here at the moment. And as you can see, they're congregating all along these power lines. And these guys are getting ready to depart now all the way to continental Europe. So that's why they're forming these large flocks. That's why um, the adult birds are starting to turn this stunning, stunning black and gray. As you can see here, some of them you can still see how they're a bit patchy. But most of them, 90% of them are looking rather dapper for their flight northwards so very very sad to say goodbye to them soon but excited to be seeing them nonetheless surya what do you have there hi john tony uh, i have a little egret again a white bird i think we are the ones who are dominating with the white birds in this uh, yeah. in this yeah. Uh, yeah. session yeah <laughs> uh, and i think both of us are close to sewage work so it's yeah we have a lot in common yes that you can see their bright yellow feet uh, the little egrets as they walk you can see that one busy beautiful to fish there as well i'm eh? busy flushing up what yes he can underneath the water yeah and he's using his feet quite uh, clearly to detect prey and then do a jab in uh, right at the end in fact uh, there were some of them who had caught some frogs just a few minutes ago uh, but uh, white wing turns interestingly uh, john and tony we have them in uh, in madras where i am right now passing through at this time of the year but definitely wow. not in such numbers we probably get the odd one or two along with whisker turns but yes. not like that uh, in 100%. fact i do have a site which is very similar to what you have but not turns you can see the pelicans over there yes 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 <laughs> Yeah, I'm just trying to line up our wires so that it looks similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, these, these turns now are going to be, um, yes, Melanie's saying all lined up. Correct. Yeah, easier. thank you, Melanie. Uh, the, <laughs> that is the all the acknowledgement that we need yes, to do what we do. we'd be watching birds, but we're actually just watching power lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, somewhere uh, among there, uh, believe it or not, there is a Shaheen Falcon, which is our local race of a peregrine. And that one was trying to hunt the golden flowers in the marsh just a few minutes ago. Amazing. Amazing. Yep, Amazing. Yep, yep. Yeah. John, joining us Surya. Now. Good morning. Hello, Jose. Uh, what do we got there? Hello. Nice to meet Colombian chachalaca is an endemic chachalaca we have in the Interandian valleys and in the foothills. So it's, it's coming to the same place of the Cock of the Rock. They have also plantain and banana feeders. So it's a family mm -hmm. of, of them. 
I'm going to move the scope to show you there is another individual doing the same stuff. So they are well, habituated to, to open areas. I, yeah. That name sounds so beautiful, Jose. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They are, they are <laughs> all but uh, this gorgeous red throat is very impressive. Just that's always quite funny Ooh. because in South Africa, um, we have a traditional tomato and onion sauce that uh, residents make and they call it chakalaka. So, <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> whenever I see uh, these chakalakas from uh, your neck of the woods. Okay. Um, I always Wait think then. of this tomato and onion sauce and I have to bring myself back down to earth. <laughs> what do well, you I never thought you'd be saying, look, yeah, there's a chachalaka in two continents. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, this is the marsh uh, I'm looking at. And uh, yep. just to the light is just about phasing. It's going to get dark real soon. In fact, it's my oh, okay. phone that's helping me get a little bit of light. Uh, to show you guys some birds. There's a dog who's been trying to hunt the birds all evening. You can see him down there. And, yep, that's my city with all the uh, power lines going through the marsh. And uh, the sad truth is there's a very high chance that this marsh may disappear in the next few years because of all the development that the city is going through in all the sides. Shane, that is sad. Sorry, I'm going to quickly divert from... Um our little turns. I'm going to give you guys a scenic view of what we've got here. Mm. So you can see typical sewage. Those are the power lines there. You can actually see the turns all lining up on the power lines. And you can see these pools here. There's Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi, Tony. And um, just filled. We've got these nice grassland fringes here behind us and some more sewage pools as well. So this nice, is where we find nice. ourselves today. You can see it's a nice overcast day as well. Um, we had yep, a lot of you can see that. Night, so. Yeah. No, stunning, stunning here nonetheless, though, even though our noses are being tested. <laughs> well, that's the <laughs> truth about birding in most places in Asia, I guess. Uh, at least in India. Uh, crawling through a lot of things to get to the pittas and things like that. Yes. <laughs> great, great, great. And uh, just to uh, add to what Diego was showing earlier, I have the wow. green one. <laughs> so this matches with most of the birds which I'm looking at. And he has an orange one to match with the standards. So this is a 832. And uh, again, I've been using it for a few months now. And it's been absolutely fantastic. Super light. Fantastic field of vision. Great for forest birding, which is what I usually do. Uh, but thanks to COVID, I'm in the city now, and I thought this is a good opportunity to show you all a little side of urban birding that we do in, in India. Hey, hello. Look at this nice frontal view of the Indigo Cap Hummingbird. It's shining like crazy. Just moved. I'll, I'll get it back in a second. And I see a black-throated mango there, I think. Uh, a green breasted. Green oh, yeah, yeah, female. of course, of course. <laughs> yes, she's very cute. Okay, I have, I have back the hummingbird. Look at it there. Oh. Meche, look at, look at our endemic, endemic indigo wow. calf. Wow, what a beautiful bird. Very nice. You know, it's funny. You have, you have the green breasted mango that we also have in the islands in the Caribbean. Uh, but you also have Veraguan, Veraguan mango that you share with Panama, isn't it? Yes, we have it. We have it in the south. Uh, it's not that distributed in Costa Rica, but Hola, if you go to the south, you have very good chances to see it. Hey, so Meche. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Bueno, good morning. Hi. ¿Cómo estás, Meche? Nice to meet Hello, you. Hello. Good morning, Jose. I just nice want to, to, what do to, you have there? to share with you the legs, the, 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 the habitat of the, where the males are uh, lacking. Down there is a stream. I am in a deck they have here for, for visitors. So it is very safe and close. And you can have access to these close views. Um, this male is probably oh. like four meters uh, away from me. And wow, of course he is amazing. habituated to, to people. Who, so it is 
not a problem to take photos, of course, without flash, but this is the normal situation here. So they are more quiet now. There are more around behind the trees. Uh, but I just wanted to, to share with spot. you guys this uh, scenario. So I don't know if you can see through the leaves. There is another male down there. Hey, Juan Diego. Hey. What's up there, guy? My friend Jose. How's everything sí. over there? And Meche. Nice to see Meche and, over here. And partner. Hello. Hello, Juan Diego. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hello. We're very good friends. We've been uh, working virtually. <laughs> Uh, okay, you have a beautiful <laughs> in um, a beautiful color arasari over here, and it's, it's actually Aww. two. Let me see if I can put the other one. It's right behind the bananas, playing hide and seek. See the bill oh. coming out over there? <laughs> yes, how beautiful! Yes, let me try to do a little Great. bit of a zoom here and see if we can appreciate that those details on its bill. More zoom. Look at that bill. Look at that massive bill. Oh, yeah. at this, remove, it so, looks like serration. Just remove some. Oh. Here's, uh, yeah, you can see the serrations on the bill, the red <laughs> rump, and then the collar on the chest. Yes, that's a very neat detail. And look at who is next to him. A brown hooded parrot right next to it. Hey, guys. We've got a sickle wow. winged one. Yeah. Oh, Wonderful. Cool. Bird. Carlos. Very legs. cool. It's beautiful. It's got red legs. It's quite big. They they're not they're very shy when you're walking in the woods. But here she seems relaxed, which is fantastic. Wow, what a beautiful bird. Look at that blue skin around the eye. Yeah. Gorgeous red eyes. It's wonderful. The <clears throat> yeah. That sickle wing one kind of reminds me like the black one we have in Costa Rica, but it's kind of gray in the back. Yeah, it kind of look, looks like it. Yeah. I and have, the, I have the blue. I have the and color of can with two to the brown hooded parrots. That's now. a yellow backed Oriole singing in the background. Oh, beautiful call. And, uh, it's interesting that the brown hooded parrots I have over here are just waiting for the color arasari to move away to start eating. Oh, color arasari is gone, and I will expect the parrots will come into the bananas. Uh, look, look at the beautiful green crown brilliant throat and the chest of the sickle wing one. Oh, nice! The sickle wing That's one, fantastic front view now with buffy chest. Oh, yeah. beautiful! Look at that. <laughs> Carlos, Carlos, did, did you tie up uh, one leg on that sickle wing one to have it so, <laughs> so quiet and nicely? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have Luis we coming to the court. <laughs> oh, we have a woodpecker. Nice. Is that like a lineated woodpecker, Luis? You have the microphone off, Luis, by the way. <clears throat> it does it does look like a delineated that was nice i had yeah. i had one here yeah. earlier in the morning how's everything at rancho meche oh, all look. good all good um it has been a, a nice morning really very nice weather and well the birds has been around too and uh, not many in the in the feeders actually but around the lodge has been lots of them Oh, cool. Yes, and how yeah, is everything here, there? Great. In Laguna de here, Lagarto. <laughs> it's kind of a slow. Look at the it's, legs it's been of dry. The, the one. Nice. Red legs. Interesting. Do you know very, what genus is that legs. one, yeah. Carlos? Is, is Camapetes or is... Uh... Yes, Cam Camapetes. Ah, cool. Cool. So it's kind of like... Goldotti. Ah, go Dotti. Hey, Junior, we have a Mot Mot, I think. Looks like a. Yeah, what's yeah. that? And Dian? Whooping? And Dian. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's the Mot Mot. Yeah, we are also in an area where the whooping Mot Mot is possible, <coughs> but has been recorded only a few times. 
So this is like a, the right place where Ambient and Whoopi's mod mods meet in their distribution range. But this one is an Ambient mod mod that has been attempting to come to the theater and has perished all there. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, w when these guys are young, uh, young uh, fleshly, they look like a, a lot uh, like a Whoopi mod mod, a little bit area. So what is there? Oh, it's the brown hooded pharaoh, I guess. <laughs> yes, got... I'm, I'm, yeah, it's my personal pet now. It's, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, cooperating exactly. very well. <laughs> and it seems like the only bird we have <laughs> that is staying for that long in the feeders here. We had a Kill Bill token for a second, but then he flew away. Hey, Juan yes. Diego. Hey, Lucas, from Argentina. Wow. Yes, my friend, here. Buenos Aires. We have a rosy bill poacher printing a male around around it a few females but then you can see a male preening take a look at this one of the most beautiful ducks for me here in the southern part of south america take a look oh. at the red bill if it show it of course <laughs> and I can see it. I yes can see it. yeah yeah and if, if you take a look at the side can you see that kind of a white patch uh -huh, i see it i see it yeah that that white patch is really interesting because it's black and white with a fine barring so it's really really beautiful from this distance, we can't see it, but when you take a close look at it, when you take a close look at it, that white patch becomes a black and white, really, really fine barring thing. So it, it went to sleep, yeah, went to bed. You can see all the birds tucking its head. Oh, we got the Koskorova back again, preening. The same uh, swan we saw at the beginning of our transmission. Hey, hey John and Tony, what you got there, friend? A plover. What kind of plover yeah. is that? A plover? A stunning little three-banded plover. Oh wow, and nice. There's a, quite a few of them. They're always they weird like this. So they'll there can be these random little puddles in the middle of nowhere, and um, these guys will end up turning up and um, busy looking for little small insects and invertebrates and that are around these small little seasonal puddles. You can see there's a couple more in the back there. They turn up in quite a lot. Yeah, of yeah quite numerously as well so there's about four in these in this puddle and, uh, are they um, in a migration at the moment no these are guys are local the these guys are all local oh, residents yeah yeah, yeah. Nah. so we generally get uh, there's a cape wagtail that's just landed in the background there as well running around you can oh, see nah. two cape wagtails uh in amongst the three banded plovers there so quite distant views but they're a little bit skittish whilst we're on foot so i thought let me just uh hang back and get some footage um before they ended up flying off see if there was one on the right here which was a little bit closer uh see if i can find him no all right so we'll divert back to these guys okay beautiful nice. plover beautiful plover. Yeah, no, very very nice so yeah quite common very small like tony says here in the background they really really not that big um they are truly truly small little plovers probably about four centimeters high if that's oh my goodness Tony, take a look. This Johnny, you are are like properly making Tony jealous because if there's one mission in her life, she wants to see a mot mot. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, the mot mot is back to the feeder, and now it uh, has a it's eating, it's wallowing this big wow. piece of the banana. Yeah, has been sitting there for a while, and now I'm going to move the scope. I have a, a this summer tanager, yeah, migrant, almost ready Stunning. to the. Oh yes, to go to the to North America, made summer tanagers just there, stayed and uh huh, has has gone. And the mod mod stays there, it's still there. Yes, use it, it feels like the owner of the feeder. All the other birds um, were fresh when this one came. So what do you have there? It's a couple of small flowers. Oh, okay, guys, wait wait a minute. I have a Male Giratana here. Look at this one. This is a funny bird. Oh, oh wow. It's, yeah, it was oh, a male Giratana here. Quick, quick in and out. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's collecting, it's taking some fruit for babies, uh, I guess. Male or female has been coming, have been coming, uh, grabbing some fruit and then leaving very, very, very fast. So, oh, cute, cute couple of, of lovers there. Yeah. And I yeah. you can see that. We have the the red crown woodpecker again. Yeah, 
coming to he's the only woodpecker coming to to feed on on fruit here. Sometimes acorns woodpecker at the time. But now we only have this 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 one here. So stunning. Yeah, so Johnny, I'm gonna shift across oh. to um oh wow. Look that I'm gonna shift bird. across to this. We have a violet saber weaving here. It's a little bit near. Let's see. Yeah, it's too close, too close. You are too close. <laughs> yes, eh, and he took off. <laughs> oh, what a lady. So, female, oh. remember, I guess? <laughs> Beautiful mod, mod, wow. Yeah. So, I've just yeah. got a, I've just pulled up a blacksmith lapwing here into the picture as well. Um, these guys are quite characteristic. They get their name from their call. So it's this very metallic sound, and it's almost like a blacksmith busy going about his metalwork. So stunning blacksmith lapwing. Yeah, often find them around water sources, um, but certainly not as colorful as your violet saber wing there. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the violet yeah, saber wing is our biggest yeah. hummingbird, and the biggest one in Central America. There he's back. He likes that birch, seems like. He just go away yes, to chase that... away other hummingbirds. Look, now I have the female. It was the female, the Gira Tanager. Yes, coming to, to the feeder. Yeah, we have the palm Tanagers, blue gray Tanager, green honey creeper, blue gray Tanager again, female, green honey creeper. They're all in line. Yes. Oh, how nice. All oh, together yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can maybe you can tell listeners why those saber wings get their name saber wing. Do you do you know by any chance? Uh, well, I was reading that if you see it, I well I read this in a post on Facebook and I didn't took the time really to realize if it was true or not. But it's supposed that they have like some weird shape on the wing. It actually has some weird shape, like they can bend it. If you can see it in your hand, you will see that they have saber wing. There are several species of, but I'm not very sure. If somebody Stunning. knows, will great, will be great to know. Yeah, but. Yes. Hey guys, guys, sorry to interrupt. I have a gray cat bird, gray cat bird right now. Wow, look at that. <laughs> this is the first, this is the first time I see <gasps> oh, a gray wow. cat bird on the feeder. Yeah, <laughs> gray cat bird. That's crazy, gray John Diego. Cats. That's great. <laughs> yeah, for for you guys and in no, a little bit farther from America. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not common. Yeah, it's not common in Costa Rica. It's, a, it's actually the favorite bird of my girlfriend, Maria, that is probably watching. So I'm happy to show her <laughs> this beautiful great <laughs> cat bird here. She always jokes, oh, like, nice. you never see a great cat bird in the field <laughs> and then have it here on a live broadcast with 300,000 people watching. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite it's quite crazy. I actually just told Tony to take a picture now of the back of my screen because I'm busy looking at all these destinations pop up. There was that four view split screen now, and it's just crazy how we're all able to share with one another these amazing birds from all different kinds parts of the world: Colombia, Costa Rica, here in South Africa. It's just it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. And look look at this funny example of two mind blowing things: a red legged honey creeper female here with a great catbird sharing a banana. <laughs> Red only, only, creeper, only happens cats. in Costa Rica, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, we like uh, visitors. Cool, so. cool. <laughs> lovely, lovely animal in a feeder, mate. Yeah, now, yeah. I wanted to to second Match's uh, explanation on the saber wing. Indeed, the primaries of all Campylopterus, that means you know, Campy is like curve and teron wing, is because they have like a bent primaries. And actually, next time you're in the field. Take your beans and look at the wings of a saber wing. You will see this weird, weird, crazy shape. It's, it's unbelievable, you know, unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Oops, sorry. Um, oh, that cat, that cat bird is amazing, man. That, that cat bird is unbelievable. I mean, it's, yeah, and it's staying for a long time. You know, like cat birds are not birds that stay for that long. Yeah. Oh, Lucas, oh, Lucas, Lucas. Lucas is back with... Oh, with, yeah. What is that, the poacher? No. Oh, it's, it's a Brazilian kill in, in this case, guys. Ooh, yes. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of ducks, but none of them are showing their face. So I'm trying to spot on the ones that are doing it. Yeah, take a look. This is a male. In this case, take a look at the white wow. face, if it is possible. Yes. Yep. Like yep. A, white. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. 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 A little bit of it, and the red legs, very distinctive on, on, on the Brazilian teal. 
That's female awesome. is a little bit browner, of course, as usual. And here comes Carlos Mario with, with saffron crown with and gold saffron crown. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I have also here a red legged honey creeper in case. Oh, it's oh, it's gone. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Back to this scarlet rump. Oh, scarlet rump is amazing. It's you know like our our flame rump counterpart. Beautiful. Oh, oh, guys, guys, I have something here. Something here. Something oh, wow. good. <laughs> lovely. Look at lovely. that. Uh huh. It's called honey creeper. Look at the yellow, the yellow rubber boots on that bird. Yeah, I'll try to you zoom got, in a little bit so you can see it better. Gotta love, and gotta here, love, here gotta love honey call. creepers. That, that alarm call it was making. Oh, look at right next to it. Red legged. Ooh, it flew. Ooh. Female now, female. Look at how beautiful the female of the, of the shining honey creeper is. So what, what, what are they feeding on right now? They'll tell us, tell us, tell us more info. They are honey creepers, but they're not getting honey. Why? <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we have very sweet bananas here in Costa Rica. Tastes like honey. People say it. So these honey creepers are happy. And are, <laughs> love yeah. love Costa Rican banana creeper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We should change the name. And the male is coming right next to it. Look at look at this uh, shining honey creeper. I have well, this palm tanager and blue gray tanager, beautiful as well. Wow. Palm tanager. But look at the female here and the male. Oh, it Brilliant. turned it into a female. Juan Diego, well, pretty good, pretty good difference. <laughs> how, how many honey creeper species do you have in Costa Rica? Uh, I have, we, in total, we have like three. Well, if you count only the ones yeah. called honey creepers, but if we call the darknesses, count the darknesses, yeah. it's more than six. <laughs> so, yeah. so, sorry, okay, we, we have like ten. We have, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry to give up. Here he uh, comes. Uh, Here uh, he sorry, comes. So, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's because I haven't, I haven't seen many. In, in this yeah, I'm, I'm bragging with our honey creeper numbers while I'm showing you know like the most common summer pictures. Look at, look at the nice differences on the males. The males are the ones with the brightly, brightly colored yolk orange patch on their forehead, and you know juveniles and females are a little, a little drier. Uh, there is, there is, there is a female there in front of a male. She has all this darker grayish head. That's males in the back, of course, all looking for that female that went out. Oh, oh, oh actually... guys, 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 one second, one second, one second. I have something really good here. Okay, and I see Luis has something also. Well, Juan Diego Guedas is probably the Tolima, though. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, let's see. It's it's... I see I see some uh, Roddy Grand Doves, and that's probably a Tolima Dove. It's a Tolima Dove, I think. I don't have a great view on it, but it looks like Tolima Dove coming to feeders there. I can't see the head very well, so this could be a white tip dove or a Tolima dove, but you know, El Encanto, the reserve where Luis is right now is a, is a great place. It's a family that decided to turn their, their coffee production farm into this ecotourism uh, place. And now they have like two different reserves on two different elevations. They are feeding ant pitas, they are feeding, you know, like uh, ant rushes. And here we are with, oh, that was a Montezuma or a Pendola for a second from Costa Rica. Sorry, sorry guys, sorry guys, we have the toucan coming to the other feeder, so I'm, I'm moving the scope and everything. Okay, what do you have there? Kill Bill toucan is that? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna keep, second. okay, okay. I'm gonna keep telling you about this area where Luis is because it's probably, you know, the high Magdalena, the, the tall massive of the Andes, is this kind of new area in Colombia that is being explored. And we have Kill Bill toucans from Costa Rica. Yes, Kill Bill toucans here. <laughs> I Finally, love them. They came to I the love feeder. Them. They are gonna kill those bananas, man. Yeah. Banana yeah. bird eating bananas. Kill Bill took and killing bananas. That sounds That's good. Cool. That sounds kind of like a yeah. Oh, you're such a poet. I love, I love you, man. <laughs> Look at you know earlier earlier when we got the Kill Bill tokens on the transmission, uh, I think it was Meche talking about their vocalizations, and it's mm -hmm. pretty neat because big Ramfastos tokens are either croakers or yelpers. So these guys, you know, like Juan Diego's birds right now are croakers and they're like frogs, like Yeah. Or you have others like the chestnut mandible toucan or, or the red bill toucan that are yelpers and they are all always yelping, yelping, yelping. <laughs> it, it, yeah, Diego, like, that's a good bird. And you know what else? Um, the people say that, in, in, that size uh, does matter. Have you ever heard <laughs> about that? Uh, I, don't, I don't suffer from that. Ah, okay, okay. Well, it's good to know. But I, I just, I just want to um, give you a, a good example in where uh, those size does matter, and it's those tokens. 
you know, their massive bill help them to feed. But size does matter. Sometimes it's with big size, but yeah. sometimes it's with small size. And that's one example I want to put you right now by changing my camera to frontal. I'm not going to show you what you're thinking. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Lucas, look at, show us your size, please. Yes. Uh, I want to show you the size of this magical thing. Oh, you because are bragging. I have Alex Villegas here with me showing me the NL Pure 8 by 32 sorry. And man, I'm surprised with the size of this thing. You know, it's so lightweight and so easy to carry around. I can easily use it with one hand. And this is totally awesome. I mean, it's, uh, I'm very surprised with this new item Swarovski is showing in here. And, uh, and yeah, I just want to brag with you. I mean, brag, brag about the toucan how, how, with how the big do you, size how, and how brag do you with find, my small size. Cause how do you find the feel, <laughs> the feel of you? The feel of you. Do you like the huge feel of you? I love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The feel of you and the, the grip. You know, this kind of like waist they made here, yeah. it really makes a difference. You know, yeah. it really makes a difference to grab it. You know, it feels really that... comfortable. It's weird. But... It's weird, but it, it's just superb. It's perfect for your hands. Ergonomics are superb. It is. It is perfect. It is perfect. But what I like about this new 32 is this is this size and the weight. I mean, it's 600 and something grams, and it's it's like nothing. It's like yeah. yeah. And this is one good example in where size does matter, but for for small, right? And, then, and then Jose comes with orange news to you. Look at that. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> They are coming and leaving, but they are now. Wow, that's great, Jose. Man. Here just to, yes, yes, excellent. I, I had a glimpse of of the grackle, but he's very shy today. So, uh, and and he's also another black and red uh, bird. So let's enjoy uh, this beautiful. Uh, just just another one. Just another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he left now. I'm going to find you know, another one. You know, we we, yeah. we actually we actually are blessed in Colombia because we have two grackles that are endemic to the country. One is red-bellied grackle that is in its own genus, Hippopyrrhus, and the other one is a, a mountain grackle that is Macrohelius. So you always think of grackles as you know pretty boring, dark kind of blackbirds, but these 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 endemic grackles from the mountains here are crazy, crazy. We have an orange chim parakeet, I think, from Roger there. That's right, Diego. Hey, yeah, cool. Yeah, orange shrimp parakeet. Yeah, they are they are quite widespread, but they are really pretty, right? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and also I was I was, oh, yeah, I was in a mission with the Tolima blossom crown, but I think I failed. They moved too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it usually happens. Do you have the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my my what is that is that some reddish on the on the head of your kill bill toucan? Uh, yeah, kind of like a little shine of uh, reddish. Diego. It's yeah, it's probably like molting or something. Yeah, it's kind of like a reddish shine it has there. Probably the light is playing as a trick as well. Oh yeah, it's been it's oh, been yeah. regurgitated. Yeah, might be the light. I thought it was sorry. It's, it was uh, regurgitating seeds. I mean, it was eating bananas, but it was making space ah. in his stomach by regurgitating some seeds. What, what are your parakeets eating, by the way, Roger? Um, I don't know the like the like the like the common English name of that one, but um, oh, uh, no. people call it here like abutilon. I don't uh -huh. know, like a scientific name or yeah. Looks like a. Uh, they really like, enjoy those ones. <clears throat> Is that yeah. a flower or something? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tiny flower. Um, cool. Yeah, they are gone. Yeah, let me, let me show you here our, my, my, the place where I, I'm right now is the Kukurula Lodge. It's a uh -huh. nice little lodge here. There you go. Awesome. My, my Tukan yeah. seems to enjoy your lodge. Just one <laughs> second. I have something else here. Just one second. Uh, let's see if I can get it. He's eating berries. Look at that. Look oh, at this. Roasted I have an olive berry here. here. Oh, beautiful pink legs. Wow. I, have, I still have it here. <laughs> Sorry, Magic. What was your bird? Uh, wood rail, I saw. 
is still here. Awesome. I'm still trying to find my olive back euphonia that it's moving like crazy here. <laughs> yes, this one got shy, got scared. There it is. Naped wood rail. I'll go back to my kill build token as well to make company to your wood rail. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> this, oh, awesome. this is quite new in the feeders here in Rancho. It was not here before and now it has I become see some water there, Mechi. It's like a little pond you made, you made over there. Uh, yes, it's a little pond uh, where the birds bait. We saw blue neck tanager over there, blue gray tanagers as well. Hey, it's gone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Yeah, what do you have over there, Johnny? Yeah, I have a bunch of uh, blue gray tanagers and the big bill euphonia. The, uh, I was trying to catch this uh, blue neck tanager that uh, suddenly disappeared. Yeah, but it's amazing that, that the kill bill too can. <laughs> uh, look at that bill. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah, I'm just enjoying it as well. So yeah, it, it looks like you have the the more colorful birds of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. well. I I don't. I'm not sure about that. You know that and the end cock of the rock is kind of like a bugger. You know, like it's oh, it's oh yeah, low. Yeah. Well, we have Roger. What you got there? It looks like a thrush type. That's right. Yeah, that's a uh, black bill thrush. Yeah, it, it just I was I was trying to focus a uh, uh, black wing saltator, but that thrush just you know, uh, scare away the, the saltator. Oh, okay. Yeah, same situation here. Yeah, all the black bills and clay colored structures. Yeah, it's chasing away and scaring away all the other birds. But we keep trying, yeah. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, keep trying and trying. Yeah, now we have here. The... Hey there, guys. Quickly, before he flies away, there's a stunning oh. little white-throated swallow here. Yeah, what's the name of the uh, wild again? White throated swallow, yeah. So he um it actually seems to be a pretty young bird still, but they get this gorgeous you can just make it out on the back actually, that iridescent blue feather coloration coming through on the back, and the stunning little chestnut cap in the front as well. Um yeah. also another species that hangs around but then seems to move off in our winter months, so not too long now, and these guys are gonna be moving off. So this is probably a youngster from this year. Um, who's now just getting ready to um, to make way his way north? Yeah, it looks like a, a kind of the large wallow. I don't know what's the size of that one. They're actually relatively, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's tough. I think it's your normal average swallow size. Um, yeah, probably the same as um, yeah as a barn swallow. I'd think probably slightly larger than a barn swallow. Um, so it's nothing huge, but it's also nothing small. So it's a pretty medium-sized swallow, I would think, yeah. Ro Roger coming in with a stunning, stunning, stunning. Exactly, yeah. What is that, Roger? Scrub Tanager. Scrub Tanager, guys. I, I was trying to get that one earlier, but finally got, uh, yeah, like, leave us time to see it. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, that was a Scrub Tanager. You know what, like here we have, oh boys, they have, I have a here an Oriole, let me just try, try to put it right away. This is a yellow back Oriole, there you go. This is the, one of the, of the coolest sounds here in the, in this, in this area, you know, like from early morning they are singing and they have like this melodic sound, it's really pretty. Oh, let me focus a little bit. There you go. Wow, Melche. Oh, Melche. Oh, beautiful, Oriole. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. In colors. <laughs> well, I were with It is, yeah, it is. The same here. <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat the name, please? It's a russet naped wood rail. Russet naped wood rail. That's nice. It's yes, it has beautiful colors. Nice. Is it big? Looks big from here. Yes, it is. And it has beautiful, like, bluish in the tip. Give it a very nice detail. 
this bird has been split into two different ones and uh, both of them will be in Costa Rica. The gray cow wood rail is the other one and they are very alike, very alike, but the other one will have less of the rufous on the nape. And supposedly it's seeing a little bit different. Too. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, like I, and, and tell me I about the saying, about the. They, 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 they indeed, they indeed sing different. Recently, yes. I heard them with Juan Diego. He didn't want to show them to me at Pocosol in Costa Rica, but I, oh. you know, I, I did notice the, the 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 song is very different. Even you know, they're loud little bastards. Mm -hmm. And right now, right now here, I have this female black-throated mango. You know, the mango females are characterized uh, because they have this black tie, so they look very, very formally, nicely dressed. Look at that, you know, that animal. <laughs> yes, I think the female is nicer than the male in, the, in those mangoes. <laughs> Ab absolutely, absolutely. Tons, tons of birds actually. Females are way more attractive. You know, breaking our paradigm. Of, of males yeah. always being the coolest. So what is, yeah. what is it about what is it about Meche that, that this wood rail is just there? You 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 built a little pool for them? Yes, well the the pool has been there for years and years. <laughs> and, and now they are the using workers it. like to be there in the afternoon and now he just appeared um, like a week or two weeks ago, something like that. And almost cool. every day has been coming here and it's quite tame actually. Uh, it was it used to be a little bit shy. And now he has been getting a little bit more thing. That's great. That's great and because seriously, well, I miss them. I miss them earlier. The Roger, 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 Roger has mermelada tree flowers, so he might have the endemic blossom crown, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he was he was there just a couple seconds ago, Diego. I'm, I'm okay. keen. Okay, okay. keep with that one out. Oh, I really keep... wanted to live broadcast this one keep with us keep with us don't break my heart mate <laughs> look at this look at this beautiful indigo cap hummingbird just you know enjoying enjoying the feeders it has a, a, a clearly has a trouble with its tongue it, it, it got its tongue out of its mouth completely uh it's just gone so i'm gonna get you another close hummingbird here this is a nice male mango look at a deep black blue on that you know chest and, and sides of the neck Quite an amazing bird, quite an amazing bird. The, the indigo cap is back there in the back feeder. So, you know, we have we have a few endemic All right, this is not... birds. There you are, there you are. What do you have? No, I, I was I was uh, chasing a, a indigo cap hummingbird too here uh, while okay. we wait again, because the blossom crown was in the, in the um, in the flowers here, in the yellow flowers, and uh, just leave. Uh, but it's coming, you know, quite quite often. So I'll keep trying. Actually, actually, those flowers you have there, the the mermeladas, are just superb for hummingbirds. They are amazing. They are cool, cool tree that everyone in in plantations and houses oh, yeah. here have. And then we got some water from Lucas. I love your I love your Argentinian waters, man. <laughs> love Wait a minute. It just, I, it just, oh, I lost it. There was a red fronted coot on the spot. Uh, there he is, there he is. Can you see it now? Uh, the, the signal is probably a little broken. I can hear you, but the, the image is just showing waters that I love. Are those endemic waters? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I can send you we, some anyway. I have, can bottle it we, we and have, send it to you behind me. <laughs> we have Luis. Look at this, this beautiful, beautiful brown violet ear uh, in, in, in some verbena flowers, actually. You know, to be honest, right now I'm using my binoculars opposite as a, as a magnification glass to ID the bird that I, I'm, I'm just watching in my tiny screen from Luis. So we, we, we have now a, a brown violet ear and the best the cool thing about this violet here is that it's in the genus colibri. It's the same word we have in Spanish for the hummingbirds, colibries. So that's a colibri delfine, a brown violet here in some cool flowers. And we have the coot. We have the coot with Lucas. Yes, we have the coot. It's the red fronted coot. Here in Buenos Aires, we have three coots. We have seen the red garter already. And this is the red fronted. There you are, mate. That's Quite, great. Yeah. Quite common bird to see, but of the three, the hardest one, probably, I would say, depends on where you are. And it's quite distinctive to ID, Diego, when you see it from the distance, because of its triangular head. 
Okay, okay. That's a good field mark. That's a good field mark. Yeah, and it has a good like field mark. Squarish, squarish feet, triangular head, roundy bill. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> also, I'm bringing... <laughs> yeah, if you say so. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to get some dark colors after all of your colorful verse, I'm trying to show you some dark stuff, you know? Absolutely, to make absolutely. It, welcome. It's to welcome, make it please. duller. <laughs> make, it, make it more boring, please. No, I'm we, doing we my best. Appreciate it a lot, mate. Like, you know, we need some more water around here. Not only hummingbird feeders, I tell you. Yeah. I, I still have some hummingbirds here in the feeder coming once in a while, but you know, um, uh, actually the, the flowers that Luis is showing right now on the screen, uh, that's the hummingbird again, the violet here, are verbena, and you know verbena is, is this genus of, of neotropical flowers that are absolutely unbelievable to attract uh, bees, bumblebees, hummingbirds, uh, everyone. Everyone goes and feeds a little nectar on those. So actually in, in many, many places around all over Colombia right now and several places in Latin America, you see all the farms, all the lodges having this, this type of flowers because, you know, naturally you can also attract the, the hummingbirds and it's, it's really, really appreciated when, when you can have them without artificial uh, sugar, artificial feeders. Let me try to show you. I have this mango just here, just in front of me is in this feeder. I'm going to try to get a little closer. It's just above the tip of my finger. And that's a male. Oh, I'm stretching here. This is yoga. Yoga birding is gone. That was a male black-throated mango. Have some more back there. There was a ruby, ruby top as a second ago. And the owner, Leonor, the owner of the place came to, to tell me. But, you know, it, it, it's so quick that I missed it. I always missed it, you know. I'm, I'm such a loser. Okay, okay, okay. What is here? Some more. Let me show you some more of these mangoes. We still, we still have the brown violet here uh, in Luis's in Luis's screen in El Encanto. You know, I, I, I love El Encanto Reserve. It's this place where you know you're supporting the locals, you're supporting local families, and and you know, family that kind of changes from from coffee farming to to birding. That's, that's, that has to be a lovely, you know, sensible people family. So that, 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 that group of people that live in Encanto is, is beautiful. You know, Michael and, and Luz and everyone there, they're, they're lovely. They actually might have some cool news, some cool uh, surprises for everyone. A cool, cool Aunt Pita, kind of a, kind of a novelty for Colombia being in the feeder soon there. So stay, stay, stay tuned for that, I tell you. Okay, I have... More saffron finches right here on my screen. Uh, they kind of they kind of take turns to go to the feeders, and then they just simply prune and come to to groom. And we have something there in the grasses. What is that, Tony and John? Yes, yeah, Diego. It's um, just a fairly common wood sandpiper. Um, things are busy quieting down here now. The sun's starting to set. Birds are going to roost. We're going into autumn now, so. Our days oh, are becoming yeah. a lot shorter. Yeah, so, yeah. What time? Yeah, what time you have right now in South Africa? What time of the day? So it's it? actually only half past three. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is because it's overcast, it's getting darker a little You're bit earlier now as well, which is yes, yeah. So the light conditions are getting a bit challenging. So I suspect this might be our last one for everybody and all our viewers across the world. So we thought we'd try to get this nice little close-up view of a wood sandpiper, quite similar to um, in the Americas. You guys get solitary sandpiper. Indeed, Very similar, indeed. Not too dissimilar, yeah. Indeed, the first time I, I, I saw your woods and piper, I was thinking exactly that solitary, solitary type, especially for someone that is not, you know, like an expert on those on those waders and water birds. You know, I, I'm more of a mountain person, of a forest person. So I, I, I kind of loved uh, getting trained on, on those. Look at this again. I'm going to try to get close. It's gone. I had a wide vented plumlet here and they're, they're really easy. Stunning, approach. stunning. Yeah, listen, our shorebirds are, are a challenge in themselves here in South Africa. I think a lot of us, uh, a, lot of, a lot of local South African birders spend their times painlessly sifting through shorebirds, trying to turn them into something rare, uh, or at least just trying to get to grips with the basic ID features. So we, we're quite fortunate in to, to have a lot of shorebirds to be oh, able absolutely. to Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you, get, um, you get trained, you get experts on that, you know, 100%. something we, we yeah. lack here. We, we, yeah, we so. are happy with the, with the colorful easy birds, you know, while you have, 
<laughs> have to really study and, and struggle to, to ID them. That, that makes you, you know, greater birders, of course. Yeah, no, 100%. And South Africa is fortunate in that we get quite a lot of migrants from both the Americas and, of course, Europe as well. So, I mean, for example, there's a buff-breasted sandpiper busy hanging around uh, a place in KwaZulu-Natal province at the moment. Um, and whilst there's a bed sandpiper um, busy hanging around in the Western Cape. So, you know, we've got, uh, and broad-billed sandpiper as well. So you've got uh, shorebirds and that from all different regions of the world busy turning up in this uh, southern tip of Africa. Superb, superb, absolutely. There is, there is Lucas again also entertaining us with some water action. Yeah, guys, I got some ducklings. I got some rosy bill poacher ducklings. Mama is somewhere over there, but the kids are hanging around all together among other ducks. Yeah, Mama is right next to the left. Can you see it there? Absolutely, absolutely. And the little ducklings in the middle. Yeah, they are taking a rest. They were swimming with, with its mother and then come up to, to land to rest a little bit. Actually, do you call them ducklings or pocherlings or something like that? What's the name of the ducklings? <laughs> I, 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 I love that, Diego. Pocherlings is a beautiful one. You've got to come with a name for that. Be... It's a beautiful switch. one. I'm actually switched here for a, for a banana quid. And we have Roger with, with what it was, I think, uh, a thick bill euphonia on Ukuku. Yeah, that's a juvenile thick bill euphonia, Roger, isn't it? I think, I think he has it some is, issues yeah. with the audio. Yeah, but we'll that's, that's it. Young, young, young male, young male thick bill euphonia. Look at the plumage. Hi there. Look at the plumage on the back. This is still a little greeny, blotchy, blotchy yellow. So it's gonna it's gonna become really really dark. This is a very nice contrasting species. There it is. It's gone. So John, John oh, look at that. Before. Oh look at that. They had a tanager. Look at that. Yes. Well, for some reason we we don't have good audio, but you know that bay had a tanager from Roger at Ukuku was unbelievable. It's a, it's, a, it's quite an amazing bird. Let me let me migrate a tiny bit to the left here for this hummingbird. That's, that's, a fee, that's another juvenile male. If you want to look at the bay head tanager, beautiful, amazing bird, red head, blue on the breast. Diego, can, can you hear me there, us. okay? Yeah, can you hear, can hear you, mate? Can hear you now. That's good. You're back. You're back, yeah, you're back, Roger. Yeah, bay headed tanager now. <clears throat> what you, uh, shoots. Absolutely yeah, stunning. I, I'm, Absolutely I'm, stunning. I keep it, trying with the... I, yeah, there is, there is. Oh, I have here about. a mod mod. Uh, let me try to. There you go. Another mod mod. There and, you, you know, go. And another, mod. another, another, another mod mod for Tony. Tony, this is our present from the Colombian team today for you. So you enjoy the mod mod. That, that's, that's Andean mod mod. That is one of the splits of the, you know, uh, uh, Momotus Momota. That it, it was a split into several things in Central America and South America. One of those secrets we have actually to, to, keep our list, Colombian list, growing. Oh, we have uh, Luis in Al Encanto with a mockingbird. Uh, that's a tropical mocker, one of the cool big birds we kind of share with several places in Central and, and South America. And indeed, a very, very good mimic, mimic singer. Uh, unfortunately, that, that also take them to be uh, captivity birds, you know. People, people put them in cages. That is actually not the... the the best situation, but they are absolutely beautiful singers. I got I got one earlier here, and I'm gonna leave my scope in these flowers because banana quid's been coming naturally there. What is what is the mod mod eating, Roger? If you can hear me, I think it's on a feeder. Yes, I can. I can. I just can you yep, hear me yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can hear you. Tell us more. Right. Yeah, the, the, uh, it is it's eating some bananas there. Um, also, they do have their the the some seeds uh, for the for the brush feed and that little uh, when these banana feeders is also a nice place to see sometimes the yellow-headed brush fish, which is also a, a, a Colombian fish I'm, I'm cross fingers to see today hey Juan Diego hey hi Roger Nice to have that mod mod over here, uh, but I have something that the mod mod might not like, and it's hard to oh see. Oh boy, it. yeah, yeah, she is. Nice. You have, have, have you, uh, yeah. Have you, you heard know about the, this the thing? one? 
Yeah, it's like it's called an eyelash pit viper. Is that no? I have. Tell me, I have. <laughs> it's we were joking. Uh, I think you or someone else was saying that uh, we have a lot of colorful stuff here in Costa Rica. Well, even the snakes are colorful here. <laughs> we have this. Is oh, like yeah. quite a common common snake in Costa Rica. It's an arboreal snake, so it likes to stay up in the trees. And and this one, it's uh, it comes with several varieties of color, like you know, green, purple, red, and green, and all kind of morphs. And this one is maybe the most beautiful of all. Is um, it's called um, Oropel, like the yellow morph of the eyelash pit viper. It's venomous. <laughs> it's deadly. Nice. But but it's so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it looks like. <laughs> They like to hang around for yeah. months. Hey, Juan Diego, and could you repeat years. this? Aha, uh -huh. it's called eyelash, like eyelash, like human eyelash, pit viper. Yeah. Ah, uh, viper. The, yeah, viper. Yeah, vipers is a type of a snake with hemotoxic venom. You know, it's a very strong venom that can yeah. hurt your muscles. I can actually go oh, yeah. closer we, if you want to see a, if if you want to see an accident live on a broad, Subarowski broadcast. I can go closer. I will remove the the cell phone from from this. This snake has been for months here and is actually hanging around. You see? Yeah, here it is. Can you see the bright? color in there that's the snake and oh yeah that's, like looks, to... that's fantastic man is, is, yeah, it, quite... is it there or quite uh, we, we had a second from canager for a few seconds there oh, uh, Carlos, that's i great. don't know if you, you can hear the chestnut i don't know if you can hear the chestnut breasted wren in the background it's amazing chestnut breasted wren nice can you imitate it? Oh. <laughs> nice. Hey, Carlos. Carlos. And to a, pair, a pair of multicolor tanagers are coming. Um, we've just not had a second to 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 show them to you. That's a black thrush, the most common thrush in the Western Andes, I think. Uh huh. Yeah. Nice. Be beautiful Junior. songs as well. Junior. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> With the blue bay amateur game, I had. I don't, uh, I, I had I don't know. I'm not email, sure but... if you can listen. To the Andean solitaire in the background as well. It sounds like a rusty swing. I'm trying, I'm trying, but I, I think I, I, at least I, I can't. I can't hear that one. Yeah, very difficult bird to watch, but you can hear it all the time here. Oh yeah. Hey, Carlos. Carlos, Carlos Mario. Hey guys. I think hey, we've I got, got a got Rufus a Collard Sparrow coming in. The maid did a ton of the art of the maid. The maid is from the left. Oh, that's a golden headed Quetzal in the background. Can you hear? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I have, I have here. Let me just. Quick clear of the blossom crown shoots. Oh boy. Oh boy, it was just there. Uh, let me see if we can. They really, as, as Diego was saying, they really like this, this kind of flowers uh, coming back and forth, but it's not really quite fast, this one. And uh, yeah, keep trying. Carlos, something there. I just, I only can. I love, I love, I love. I'm, I'm here, Roger, and I, I love the audio of Carlos Mario a second ago because you know right now I'm showing you a Rufus tail hummingbird, Carlos, entertaining. But yeah. Carlos was was showing us, you know, sounds 
Oh, look at that. Uh, is that what? Saffron that, Crown or... It's a Golden Naped Tanager. Golden Naped Tanager. Cool. Golden cool. Naped Tanager. Oh. And indeed, you know, Carlos Mario, this... I was talking that... You, we that, could that was use the Quetzal, Quetzal again, Diego. Yeah. It's... Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's singing. It's singing in the... <laughs> I'm playing back. I'm playing back your Quetzal. I'm playing back your Quetzal from here, mate. You know, 600 kilometers straight straight line in Colombia. Keep, keep. And Chachalaca. Keep, keep. Jose, Jose, Jose has the Chachalaca. Hey, hola. Sí, sí. Chachalaca is back. There is another individual on the ground, but this one is feeding with tranquility. Cool. Cool, absolutely yep. cool, mate. That's a banana we love, we love, I think there. another individual is, is, is moving, and a third individual is coming from the forest. I think there will be four, four of them. Just wait for a while. Neat, neat, absolutely neat. You know, and Carlos Mario was also, I can oh, hear that's... I can hear the Rufus Collar Sparrow behind there in Carlos Mario uh, in La Minga, that is that one, and he was calling about, yep. he was telling and us about the, the chestnut as well, breasted Diego. wren. Carlos Mario, isn't the chestnut restaurant the most melancholic, beautiful, profound sound you have ever heard in nature? Yeah, definitely. It's amazing. Is this, you it's know, is this wonderful. soft? Is this soft? I mean, it's a, it's, it's a flutist. It's a flutist on, on, on the best, on the best uh, noise. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the yeah, Colombian... Yeah, we, we actually call it the flautista. <laughs> yeah, cucarachero flautista. That is actually funny because there is a flutist, flutist ran yeah. in the tepuis that we don't have here in Colombia, but we call it flautista in, in Espanol. Oh, my, my Rufus Hell hummingbird. Yeah, so, sometimes you can hear the okay. song for, like, going and going for about three, four minutes. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. So look at Carlos this. Mario, Carlos Mario, show us, show us, please, a little bit of your of your setting. Get the scope, the the phone out of the scope, and show us what La Minga is is about, what it looks like. Show us the gardens there, please. It's a it's a great place in the Western Andes where you are. Yeah, we're we're working on it, uh, Diego. The the gardens are full of verbenas, which is a beautiful. Guys, I have the blossom crown. Guys, blossom, blossom, blossom <laughs> crown. Roger has blossom crown. Wow. Guys. I, I could see some tips of the tail. Oh, oh boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, Roger, we, we really believe you, mate. Okay, okay let's, let's show only endemics. Do <laughs> 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 you guys do you guys do it? <laughs> I, I always believe you, even if yeah, it was, you're it was quite fun. You know, I always believe you. Crown, can I hear? <laughs> no, more. no more because <laughs> the Oh boy, enemies, guys! More chalacas there with Jose and Johnier is oh, coming. Oh, Johnier, live in a What second. a nice view of the Kiskadi. It, it's not an endemic, but it's a great Kiskadi. <laughs> it's a great, it's yeah. a great bird. It's great. Yeah, great, great. Kiskadi. Okay, I have three, three chachalacas. At, at the same him. time, two there, one is gone. Give us, give us a little I bit of another. focus, Jose. Jose, give us a little bit of focus wheel, please. There's a cool, cool okay. view. What about? It looks like a tailless chachalaca. <laughs> nice. Where's the tail? <laughs> so, so Johnier, Johnier, tell us a little bit more about kiskadis. Aren't they fly catchers? Hey. Shouldn't be eating insects. Why is it coming to bananas? What's the deal? Kiskadis eat every kind of uh, thing they can catch. I think they're eating lizards, uh, 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 frogs, uh, even mice. So kiskadis are that kind of, of birds. Uh, they are opportunistic. Look at this beauty. Jose, Jose. Jose, Jose, Jose. And, nice. mod mod. and then Mod Mod is coming to feed as well. So he's waiting for the chachalacas to finish. And basically, he's looking around. Uh, cool, I cannot cool. see the tail from here, but ooh, oh wow wow flying he flew flying fly to your okay. fly, fly <laughs> to your camera actually. <laughs> yeah, nice it's pretty, experience. It's, it's pretty cool because when you show it to us, Johnier was saying that the, the great kiskadis are omnivorous. They are not restricted to insects. They would eat anything. Guys, it's the same case again, actually for the mod mods. Okay, blossom crown back in Roger's screen with the orange flowers. Go everyone to the top left screen. <laughs> 
we are we are trying to believe in this chap that is in the Lima department in Colombia. <laughs> well, he's on a quest. He's on a quest for the Blossom Crown. For some you. reason, as soon. Yeah, we believe. Yeah, you, as soon as we I talk, I yeah. think they move. Some, oh. some, some cool blue, blue gray tanagers. I think I have, I have dreams on that in the video. I am, I am amazed with the amount of plantain this individual is taking. Wow. Look at the trout. It's full of food. Indeed. Indeed. What, what happened with the tail of that bird, Jose? I'm not sure. I'm going, I'm going to look through my EL 8x32. Okay. It's, it's gone. No tail at all. Okay, it's like a wood. <laughs> looks <laughs> looks like a like a weird chicken and pita chachalaca thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's, look at this, this other wow. individual. That's a, that, that's a good setting, especially when you are just you know a few blocks away from the main square of of this charming town where you live, Jardin in the Western Andes, and you have the closest, easiest, craziest cock of the rock leg in the world. I mean, with <laughs> chachalacas and red belly grackles, everyone just hanging out there. Do you, do you actually enjoy living in Jardin, Jose? Do you like living in Jardin? I mean, it's Yes, violent. yes. I cannot imagine living in another place right now. Is This is heaven. You, you, oh, you're, 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 doing, you're doing this coffee, coffee monitoring plantations, yes, you know, with bird yes, a little bit more. It's pretty cool. Actually, we are finishing this this week. This is a pilot project between Cornell Lab of Ornithology, Nespresso AAA program and Selva, Colombia. So we are doing a project between three countries, Colombia in one town in Jardín, Costa Rica in San Ramón, and in Nicaragua. And basically we are doing an, a, a research to evaluate the richness of birds in every single habitat in the coffee range. Here we are monitoring between 1,500 meters until 2,000 meters, which is the highest cool. range of the, of the coffee. And all those those species are are common in the coffee farms and this actually place... actually actually while while you talk about coffee look at look at what i'm showing you guys these are coffee beans this is a little plant of coffee they have here <laughs> in the garden nice. these are coffee beans one of our you know exportation products from colombia hey lucas what is this line coscorobas coscorobas guys yes we're going back to coscoroba the two of them have decided to move so you're getting a better view now. I'm trying to fuck you. Sorry. You, you, They're you, moving. Gotta, you gotta love Coscorova swans. Aren't they great? Uh, the, the, the phone is moving. Sorry, sorry. Don't worry, mate. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are, you know, entertained with a grain of coffee. Meanwhile, it's not a bird, <laughs> but, you know, a few, a few grains of coffee. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, still in the action. Don't worry. Look at this. Look oh, at the, indigo, indigo I, I, in the background while, while we get the Coscorovas. I, I will move my scope a little bit, so don't worry. Uh, we have a we have a kind of a boat chasing away all the birds, guys. Don't worry, don't worry, mate. I'm covering you with an indigo cap, hummingbird zooming all the way. So that's why it's shaky a bit. I want there you are. I'm zoom all the way, so it's a little tough. But look at that. Why why is it called indigo cap hummingbird? That's the reason. That's the reason. Well, well, we have some coscorovas uh, in the right. Coscorovas seem perfect. Yeah. We are, we are watching your Coscorovas a little uh, frozen screen. So here we are with the indigo cap hummingbird uh, from the Enchanted Garden in the Eastern Andes of Colombia. This is an endemic of this kind of dry, more Magdalena Valley area on the Eastern Andes. Uh, and actually, Luisa del Encanto is showing us some feeders. There might be actually the same species there. I have to, I have to use my beans as a magnification glass here on the screen. We have still vented hummingbird there and white vented plumlet here in the right of the feeder. Uh, there is also black throated mango. You have to see me right now. I'm, I'm watching, you know, as a magnification glass with my, with my beans. I, I just love this interaction here. That's again a black throated mango female. We have some neat wasps on the left. There, there it is. There it is. There's the indigo cap in the left. And there is uh, still vented hummingbirds. This is fun. We're showing you kind of the same species here. My indigo cap left, but we keep showing the ones in El Encanto. And Juan Diego in Costa Rica has a huge monster from prehistoric times, mate. <laughs> no worries, no worries. My lizard is not going anywhere. Uh, but 
I move it, it's gonna disappear completely. Because maybe gonna, you heard a thing that walks on water. The oh, famous Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh. For some people, a nickname Jesus Christ lizard, but it's a brown basilisk. It's a type of, uh, you know, big lizard that they develop a giant box on their, the back of it. This is like a, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh, juvenile, uh -huh. maybe. It's not full developed. But they like to live near water. We have a little pond here uh, in this place. And yeah, there's, there's lizards like to hang around here and take advantage of the water. Okay, we need, you, we need you actually going to the Rosset Nave Woodrail Pond and watching us this basilisk doing the Jesus Christ thing over the water. <laughs> yeah, I would love to do that. I mean, show it in life. Uh, one of these lizards running over the water. It's, it's, they do it they really down the water with two legs and then really fast. Cool. But this one is just cool. hanging around here. And I promise I didn't have it in my pocket and put it there. So it's just... Red belly grackle. Red belly that's grackle. Gray. That's great. That's great. Jose, look oh, at that. Red belly grackle. Red belly grackle. Yes, this is, this is the, the, the species Diego told before. This is an endemic. Oh, wow. He moved. There is another individual in the feeder. Just believe me, is behind. We believe you. We Let's believe see. you. He and is coming out. Yeah. They remember, very remember, shy. remember, very... everyone. This is a this is an endemic grackle and is in its own genus, Epopyrus. There is no other Epopyrus in the world. We have this in Colombia, and you know, it's like a few kilometers from the Ecuadorian border. So. It's, it's one other of the endemics we might be sharing in the future with Ecuador very easily. There you are, Jose. That's great. That's great, Jose. <laughs> no, that's great. Grackle. <laughs> Thank you, Grackle. Yeah, that, okay. that's, no, that's amazing. Great, Jose, but great, amazing. Great, great Grackle. Uh, so, you know, I, Jose, I, 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 think, I think actually that uh, we, we, we have to be, to be closing in the show. Right now, I, I heard okay. from, from everyone in Mission Control, but we really, really love that, you know, you, you show us the grackle. Actually, I'm with Juan Diego right now, the basilisk. And Juan Diego, mate, I, I, I would love hey. to, to have you on camera if you can turn it, please, because we are, we are close Diego, to the show. Diego, that's, that, that is my frontal camera, Diego. That's me. I can, I can hear you very well, mate. What? Uh, that's my frontal camera. That's me. Oh, okay, you're beautiful. You're even more beautiful today. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know you. You were. You know. You, your skin was so hard. So maybe if you. If yeah, you I, I'm not using. I'm not using any cream or anything. Tropical <laughs> sun does not. So we finish the show. We we are absolutely absolutely happy to be here with everyone that watch. We want to thank everyone on the on the streaming. Everyone that was broadcasting from Sri Lanka. India, South Africa, Argentina, all the places in Colombia, Juan Diego Mech in Costa Rica. And we are absolutely, absolutely excited to share with you the new, you know, NL Pure 32 millimeters. You know, these are tiny new NL Pures. We know everyone is going to love them. Juan Diego has the green ones. I'm, I'm, I'm using the, the, the orange ones. And we want to thank everyone. Thanks for watching today, Juan Diego Mate. Enjoy your NL Pures and, and see you next time. We're having everyone on the screen right now. Hey, goodbye, everyone. I am all style. EL 8x32. Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, pay attention to the, to the website and social media of Proxy Optic because the NL Pure are going to be in the news. They're going to be available soon in the stores. And all information is going to be online. Unbelievable. Thank you, Lucas Again. and Johnny Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was great. Thank you, mate. Thank, Thank you, you Swarovski, for this moment. Bye-bye. <laughs> Absolutely, Roger. Ciao, ciao. Cheers, guys, from Colombia. Thank you for coming today. I am a storyteller, and this landscape is my home and my inspiration. Everything begins with what we see. This is our first connect with the natural world. To reignite this connect with our beautiful planet, I seek stories unheard and unseen. Exploring these forests is about knowing where to look and the clarity of vision. In this journey, there are always moments to cherish.
to share and to slow down time. That is incredible. Oh yeah. This is what we live for.